Okay, Bansall Mill part two, here we go. If you missed the first video where I covered all the prep work, introduced the build team, and showed building the 12 foot by six foot bed, then there is a link for you down below. This video picks up right where I left off, which was to start building the carriage of the bandsaw mill. This is the cage-like portion that sits on top of the bed and rolls back and forth. We used the bed of the mill itself as the work table to build the carriage and started by laying out and clamping together the parts that will make up the first side. Those fireball squares were heavily relied on here, as well as these awesome ratcheting Bessie clamps. These quickly became everybody's favorite go-to clamp during this build. Even though we aren't welding it in place right now, we went ahead and set in that center vertical member just for dry fitting purposes. Once everything was nice and locked in, JD went through and tacked all of the corners in multiple places. Next we repeated by building up the second side and you'll see that we actually built this one directly on top of the first side. This not only gave us the perfect size work surface, but it also meant we just had to line up all of the edges and faces to the already perfect side under it. Johnny tacked it and then we all divided up to conquer different tasks while JD did his thing and welded all the corners and seamed shut. You know, even though all of us can weld, JD is the professional and he doesn't only do a better job, but he can also do it much quicker than any of us. So if you find yourself working on a team, especially if you're used to doing everything yourself, understand everybody's strong suit beforehand so that you can divide up accordingly. Another example on how we implemented this is, this is Matt's design and he's already built one. So he is very much the foreman of the group and would be the one to divvy up the task and also to make sure we weren't messing them up. Johnny, me, and Cremona started working on the saw head beam. This is the large beam that will span across the two sides of the carriage eventually. And we first needed to transfer, drill, and tap a bunch of holes that will later attach a linear rail to. So I went through first with a small bit to get the hole started. Matt followed with another bit to enlarge the hole. Then Johnny followed behind him to actually tap them. Next, we divided up again and started prepping, making the parts needed for attaching the carriage to the bed. Matt went to the welding tables and welded together the housing that will go around the wheels while I went over the super jaws and used the grinder to bevel parts that will be next up to weld. And this is when Johnny found the hoverboard. Well, my calves, my calves are starting to get a little crampy. Can you get out of my shot? How are they gonna see what I'm doing if you're hovering? <laughs> <laughs> this hoverboard was actually the center of a lot of after hour entertainment. <laughs> Strike a pretty pose. Strike a pretty. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go forward, not in circles. You gotta go forward. No, 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 Play hard. All right, getting back to work. I know I said this in the first video, but working around a professional welder was awesome. Diddy was great at throwing out information or advice as we were working. In this example, he saw that I was using a back and forth motion to bevel and pointed out that these flap discs actually only remove material when pulling and kindly showed me the correct technique for getting the most out of the tool. At this point, we were waiting for a lot of parts to cool down before standing the carriage up. So we kept ourselves busy with peripheral tasks. Johnny started making a plate for the motor mount. Then I worked with Matt to make a sleeve that goes on the saw head beam. This isn't fixed in place. It needs just enough wiggle room to slide back and forth slightly. And this is because later on it will be used to tension the blade. To give the plates the wiggle room needed, Matt taped some cardstock to the saw head beam before we clamped the plates in place and I tacked them down. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but Matt has a full playlist of videos documenting whenever he built his bandsaw mill. So if you want to check those out, there's a link for you down below. When it came time to weld the sleeve up, JD actually came over and guided me through the process. Do this good and fast. Right. What's that? Go, go. No metric stuff. Okay. Um, we did this in the middle? Yeah. We've got it tacked everywhere? Yeah. 
if we would have started and just done like these corners instead, like from here to here, yeah. we could have had it pull up here. Oh, this way, it's pulling this one and this one, so we're, we're good. That's why we just did that one all in the middle. We're good to go. So you can just sit there and do this one and this one, okay. and we'll probably flip it twice, yeah. and then do both of them, and then just keep going. I really encourage you that even if you are experienced in something, if you have the opportunity to work with somebody with more experience or maybe just different experience than you, try to go into the encounter with a really open mind to absorbing whatever information you can instead of maybe just showing off what you can. And that way you're always open to picking up something new and learning. So after welding the sleeve on, we needed to remove it to get rid of that cardstock underneath but it was giving us all a pretty good run for our money. JD seemed to take it as a personal challenge and while he had to work for it, he definitely busted it in the end. <laughs> okay, show's over, back to work. At this point, the wheel housing Matt made earlier were cool enough to start cleaning up. JD would use a cutoff disc to remove the bulk of material, while I used a flap disc to just pretty them up some. And man, these Armored Tool self-adjusting clamps are awesome. Definitely another recommended item for the shop. As parts all over the shop were made, they would filter into Foreman Cremona, and he would set them up on the mill. You can see he's using magnets to hold things in place as well as the hardware for aligning and centering it. Then we switched off on sticking them in place. Now, while we did use both the Lincoln PowerMig 210 and 260 machine, the 260 was the go-to machine for this project. If you were just getting started with welding, then I would 100% recommend the 210 machine. But for something of this size, it was nice having something a little bit more powerful and scaled up. All right, let's stand these sides up and start assembling the carriage parts. You can see JD over on the right clamping a few fireball squares in place before we move these onto the bed. These are, of course, very heavy, so the squares will give us a way to quickly attach the cross members to connect the two sides once they're stood up and in the air. Once the wheels were placed on the track, JD moved a ladder to the inside and walked up the cross member to clamp it in place. Next, the guy stuck two levels on the sides of the carriage and plumbed it up so that JD could tack and then weld the corners in place. Of course, we had to push it around a little bit and test it out. <laughs> oh, and as Matt smartly pointed out, with a movable carriage, it is a great time to clamp on some temporary stops to prevent it from possibly being rolled right off. After playing around a bit, we got out of JD's way again and let him weld on all of the angled gussets. A lot of people were asking if this was going to be an indoor mill. And no, it isn't. But it is important that the carriage be built on top of your bed. With that, we built both units inside so that we wouldn't be reliant on good weather or restricted on power outlets. This of course means that we will have two giant assemblies to move out separately, which I will get to in a few minutes, but know that another option is to do what Cremona did and build it on site where the mill will live permanently. While JD stayed in his zone of welding, Johnny and I prepared the last two verticals of the carriage, which would be attached next. These are the two joints that get a linear guide rail attached, which the saw head beam will later ride up and down. So these are placed right in the middle on each side of the carriage. Again, the guys used the help of a few squares clamped into place when setting these into their position so that they could stand up these heavy verticals, but then just scooch them up against the squares. Now, it is very important that these two be perfectly in line with one another. So while my edit makes it look very quick and simple, JD and Matt did spend a lot of time Time getting this just right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see what's going on here, so let me just pause the footage. They clamped a speed square to the outside face of the opposite vertical. Then JD placed a long level on the associated face of the second vertical. 
On the inside of this level, JD is holding his laser measure so that Matt can twist their vertical until that laser mark is touching the speed square, meaning that both faces are in line with one another. That's it. That's it. High five. That's a good one, guys. <laughs> After a few high fives and chuckles over their rig, JD welded these two members in place. Then it was time to move this beast outside. And you know, we told JD to get after it, but apparently the man does have a limit. I guess it's around 3,000 pounds. So the shop grain was put to use on one end while the tractor came in on the other. Now the goal here is just to get the carriage and bed slid out far enough for the carriage to pass under the porch so that it could be taken off and separated from the bed. Once we got it closer though, we could see we were missing clearance by just a few inches. So we quickly removed the feet on the front half of the assembly and this bought us the clearance needed to make it all of the way out. You know, it is nerve wracking, but it's also exciting watching such big stuff get moved. Of course, having a good operator is essential for feeling confident that things will go smoothly. But Cody was on the tractor, and if anybody can safely move big and heavy stuff, it's him. The guys tilted the carriage onto the bucket, and you can see that they wrapped a chain around the top as insurance in case it tried to get away from them. It didn't though, and they were able to just gently set her on down and then step her right off. Then, nothing fancy after that. Cody just drug it right on over to where it needed to be, which is, I don't know, about 30 or 40 feet to the north of my shop. After he dropped it off, then he came back for the bed. To save my concrete porch, we used the crane once again to drag it off completely. But then Cody was able to grab a hold of the side and pick it up and then haul it away. Again, with those awesome rigging straps. Man, they are dead useful, folks. <laughs> and you can see JD and Cremona acting as counterweights on the back of the tractor there. The bed was so heavy that the back end was having trouble staying on the ground. After we got the bed moved over to its roughed in position, we threaded back on the feet we removed earlier and then set it down. Now, I'll probably end up pouring a slab for this, but in the meantime, the guys positioned a paver under the four corner feet. After placing a stone under each foot, then we were able to thread out each one so that it was in contact with the pavers. So getting the carriage back on top of the bed was a little bit more difficult than taking it off. Cody attempted a few things with the tractor, but quickly realized that it wasn't going to have the lift needed. No problem though, he is resourceful. He ended up moving out his gantry, which is just big enough to straddle the entire bed. This meant that we could use a chain hoist to latch onto the carriage, pick it right up, and then set it right back down. As you can see, it took all six of us, seven if you include Aaron filming for me. You know, it's difficult to move such a big, heavy thing just slightly this way and that way. So it took a little bit of finessing to get all four wheels on their tracks. Nice. But once all four wheels got seated properly, man did it glide easily. And we did use a few more of those Bessie C clamps on the back end of the track to act as more stops. And there we go, folks. We have a rolling carriage on top of a flat bed. Way to go, team. <laughs> I'm proud of us. Okay, in the next installment, we'll be building out the saw head beam, mounting it in place, and then fingers crossed, hopefully making a few cuts before the guys have to get out of here. Don't forget to tell me what you think about the build so far down in the comments section. And of course, check out the entire build crew with the links I've left you in the description. That's it for this one. I'll see you on part three. You know, some of you have been saying that the mill is overbuilt. And you know what? We agree. Forget the six by six saw head beam and forget those 30 inch wheels. We found a much cheaper solution that works just fine. Here we go. Before I let you go, I want to say a big thank you to this video sponsor, which is Skillshare. If you're not familiar, Skillshare is an outstanding online learning platform that has classes on just about every subject that you can imagine. What I like about Skillshare is for an annual subscription of less than $10 a month, you can pick any subject that you're personally invested into learning about and deep dive into it. You have choices of photography and business, freelancing, how to use Pinterest. I mean, the list just goes on on what you can pick. 
If you're among the first 500 people to click the link in the description and use my code at checkout, you'll get your first two months of Skillshare for free. I'm personally taking a class right now on learning a 3D modeling software called Fusion 360. For me, a 3D modeling software drastically streamlines the planning process of a project. So I 100% recommend investing the time in order to learn one of the softwares out there. Again, the first 500 people to click the link down in the description and use my code at checkout will get two months of Skillshare for free. Big thank you to Skillshare for supporting my channel and what I do. You got a whooping stick? A whooping stick. I'm lighting your plans on fire. <laughs> By the plan. <laughs> Build your own band saw. Another oh, placement. Let me see it. Is it not backwards? That's forward. Oh, April! <laughs> right, that's ah. well, I told myself and the entire group, no more storing up to this point. But no, I'm storing it again. I'm out in the car waiting on these guys. They're in my shop. And now I come in and they're on my hoverboard. Yeah, that's the way 